Dunn is done officially. He is now going to be known as Butch on the main roster. And of course, Sami Zayn's had his phone number leaked everywhere. And Big E seems to have suffered an injury on SmackDown tonight. But this is things you might have missed. And before we get started, make sure you've hit the like button. It really does help these videos out. And if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button too. So Pete Dunne is officially now known as Butch. It's been trending ever since it happened. We found out the inspiration from the character seems to be the Little Rascals character, Butch. You can see here with the cap, the suspenders, definitely does look like Pete Dunne looks now on the main roster. Pete Dunne, now known as Butch, does seem to be officially a call-up. However, WWE did explain this. With Sheamus, with Pat McAfee on commentary, they said that this is a nickname. Butch is a nickname that Pete Dunne's always had. They, they referenced it that we knew him by another name. And do you know what? It's not the worst thing WWE's done. I can get behind it as long as eventually, one day, they break him away from Sheamus and Ridge and he becomes Pete Dunne again. And with Pete Dunne tweeting out, Butch, probably, hopefully, a lot of fans are holding on to the hope that this will end one day. Now, obviously, Sheamus and Ridge Holland picked up the victory tonight over Kofi and Big E. But during the match, this happened. Ridge Holland using a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Big E landing right on the top of his head. There was pictures and videos emerging of Big E being stretched out of the arena. He did give the thumbs up. However, just as SmackDown went off the air, Big E took to social media and posted this. I can't thank all of you beautiful people enough for all of your concern and your messages. It's very heartwarming. Uh, I can move all my digits. You see that? That's nice. That's always a good thing. Um, strength feels fine, but unfortunately, uh, right now, they tell me my neck is broken. So there's that. But uh, once again, thank you, everybody. I'm going to be all right. I'll be good. Don't worry. Go to sleep. Don't worry about all me. But uh, for real, thank you. Obviously horrific. How he can stay positive is inspirational. Completely inspirational. Um, best wishes and speedy recovery, of course, to Big E. This is Sami Zayn's phone. Of course, you can see all the missed calls and text messages because in his rivalry with Johnny Knoxville, Johnny Knoxville leaked his phone number. This has been all over social media for a few days after Sami got hold of Knoxville's number and started to text him. Do you know what? People can bash this feud all they want. It's comedy gold that extends past WWE programming. And I really like it. It's been a while since I've used that on the things you might have missed, but there is some major Bray Wyatt news this coming weekend. Wyndham will be making his first wrestling-related appearance since leaving WWE at Showcase of Legends. And I know so many of you in the community are going to this. And if you are, have loads of fun. Social media is going to be buzzing because people really want to know what Bray Wyatt has to say. So look out for that. WWE 2K22 officially launched today. <laughs> And that left 2K to do a stream today with Cedric Alexander, Shelton Benjamin, Liv Morgan, and of course, Alexa Bliss. Her first kind of appearance after Elimination Chamber. And she basically confirmed on the show that her playground, fun house, dark evil Alexa is the most fun she's ever had in her in ring, which is great to hear. Hopefully that means she gets a say in what her new character is. So maybe something to note for sure there. She did also confirm that her NXT character would never return. So if he was hoping for this return, she said it will never, ever happen. But it is always good to see Alexa Bliss. You can see almost the pink has kind of faded from her hair a little bit. You still see traces of it. But something else worth noting. I wonder if that's part of the new character change or something. Austin Theory played mind games with Pat McAfee this week. And Pat McAfee bit the bullet and attacked Austin Theory, jumping over the announce table, laying in the shots. And then we found out Michael Cole 
is better than all of WWE security because he actually stopped to fight people. Just send Michael Cole. That's all you need to do now. Stop the security that never come out. Just use Michael. But I, I'm all for this. This feud, it's fun. And that's honestly it. Sometimes in wrestling, you just need fun. But rather concerningly, what Michael Cole said later on was that Pat McAfee might not be coming back to the announce table due to the repercussions of attacking Austin Theory. So watch this space. Is Pat McAfee done on commentary? Brock Lesnar showed up tonight and Brock obviously kicked off the show, calling out Roman Reigns, throwing the WWE title out of the ring. Obviously, this is after what happened in Madison Square Garden on Saturday. Absolutely called for. Brock Lesnar was obviously going to do it. Heyman came down to provoke the beast. And he made the mistake because Brock chased him in what would be the first of two backstage segments tonight. Brock Lesnar tried to catch up with Paul Heyman. Heyman getting away in a car. I like this. I love this kind of stuff. When it feels more real... When it feels like they're showing you things you shouldn't see and things that shouldn't be happening backstage. Just feels slightly more realistic and I like that. Now on Twitter today, Bailey confirms she is officially a free agent. Now I think what she means by that is within the WWE, she's not drafted to either Raw or SmackDown or NXT. So potentially Bailey coming back soon. We just don't know where. Ricochet and Sami Zayn was the main event and they put on a clinic. Great wrestling match. Huge 6.30. Huge spots by Ricochet. That push to the outside looked awful. And I'm all for it. Ricochet is IC champion right now. I like it a lot. Ronda Rousey was on SmackDown once again. Seemingly very uninterested in these promos, Ronda. You've got to work on that. It looked like you did not want to be there. The promo, it wasn't even that bad. For what it was. She was basically talking about last week with Charlotte Flair. However, some news before we get to what happened. Ronda Rousey will be a part of the WWE Live Tour in the UK. Newcastle, London in April. That's literally going on sale Monday. Pre-sale started today. So make sure you check that out if you're in the UK. And Smackdown ended with the brawl between Charlotte and Ronda backstage. I love this. That fish hook submission like move to Ronda Rousey. It looked painful, man. It looked bad. It looked cool. And again, I love these backstage segments. It just feels natural. It feels like you're not watching something scripted. And although you know it is, the kayfabe is still there. And I think WWE need to do more of this stuff. WWE has officially given us CGI effects for the off-road segments with Toyota. I, I am okay with this. Nakamura and Boogs are providing a little bit of comedy mid-show. WWE making a load of money. And of course, Nakamura and Boogs got to go surfing. I'm sure they're very happy with that. <laughs> Honestly, why not? It doesn't hurt, does it? We're about to go to commercials anyway. WWE have a new evil show coming out on Peacock. This looks really, really cool. It's all about talking about the heels of the business and why they're evil and what makes a good heel. I love it, man. It's a cool little segment with Sasha where she talks about, you don't make kids cry. Sasha Banks makes kids cry, though. Can't wait to watch that. It looks very good. Of course, the Usos were on SmackDown, the Bloodline. And they actually did, what does it call it? They called it the Penitentiary Unlocked. I don't know why, but that's just basically WWE wording for a promo that was then interrupted by the surfers themselves, Nakamura and Rick Boogs. And you see Rick Boogs limped his way to the ring. His leg all taped up. But this is wrestling. And he faked it. He was fine. And he military pressed the Uso. I can't remember which one he faced. One of the Usos. <laughs> he literally military pressed him. Lifted him above his head. Ten times. I love that. Almost Cesaro-esque with the swing. That was really, really fun. I think they could do a lot more with Rick Boogs. Hopefully WWE see it. Because Rick Boogs is really, really cool. I've got to say as well, I really, really appreciate the fact his finishing move is a pump handle slam. I love that move. Very old school. Reminds me of Test. And I really, really like it. Overall, I enjoyed SmackDown tonight. Very solid show. Very easy. 7 out of 10 for me. Obviously, prayers and hope and thoughts go to Big E right now. Hopefully, he's okay. Um, let me know your thoughts on the show in the comments down below. Like the video if you are new to the channel. 
hit the subscribe button. See you as always next time. I'm knackered. Peace!